part three on fasting. Um, so like I was saying, the fasting should be something we do with joy towards God, um, knowing that we're going to go closer to him. Um, it can cause mourning and it can cause sadness in our hearts, especially if we're really stretching our flesh away from something that it wants. Um, but this is where that spiritual battle is, right? This is where God becomes our strength and our weakness. And he knows that we're going to be putting ourselves in a, a state of weakness. Um, but in doing so, the spirit is going to fill that gap, merge that gap the same way Jesus did, right? So all of this is, is, is a beautiful uh, shadow of things to come, right? So when you look at fasting, we are putting ourselves into submission, our flesh, but we're, uh, we're asking Jesus to bridge that gap to heaven that we can't, right? And so in fasting, we're doing that. We're coming to him in a joyful manner and saying, I, I want to grow closer to you and I want you to be a bigger part of my life. But in doing so, I've got a clean room for you to do to be there, right? Um, I can't ask you to move into a room that I have stacked full of boxes because you'll have nowhere to, to indwell, right? So what God asks is I need you to go into that room and I need you to throw some things out. I need you to make some room, right? And he doesn't come in and say, move it all out now, <laughs> you know, because we would literally die. Um, but he's asking us, hey, I need you to start making some progress, right? You can't sit there on your hands and just cry in the middle of the room. Um, I need you to at least try to pick something up and move it. And that's what we're doing in fasting is we're taking something that's a placeholder in our life and saying, I'm going to put this in submission and weaken that spirit and weaken whatever that is that has a hold on me so that God can come and stand in that place and destroy that fortification that's been placed inside, right? So there are fasts that are mentioned about in, in Scripture where abstaining from juice and water and food and things like that, especially in the Old Testament. Um, and then when we look forward, um, and I mean, we could get into all these about Esther and Acts and things like that in another video or if people have questions. Um, but as always, I, I can always teach you and give you whatever it is you need, but I, I urge you to open that Bible up and search yourself because there will be wisdom and revelation that God gives you that I can't give, right? Um, so in 1 Corinthians 7, 3, 6, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. Um, the wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband in the same way the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer, then come again, then come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So right there, we see that God is saying you, you can fast this part of your life, right? You can abstain from this to grow closer to me, but be aware that if you try to go too long with it, you can succumb to that. So there's a warning there. 